Hello, this is Irene Nardaki. We're live with uh, Radiator Arts and uh, Irter Dependency Now. Um, I'm going to call Tamas to um, join us. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to have today an interview with um, Julian Garder. And here's Tomas. Hi, Tomas. Hi, Irene. How are you doing? Are you here for the tzatziki recipe? <laughs> I am only here for the recipe. <laughs> I'll show it in my last interview. My I'm, last waiting. Interview. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you want to say a few words before we start? Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm looking forward to your conversation with uh, Julian Gardner. And uh, he is uh, participating in the exhibition as a contributor with, with his installation and his book uh, at Ray Data Gallery. The uh, exhibition is called Interdependency Now. And uh, you will talk about it a little bit more. I guess. Um, the gallery is currently closed, as we discussed in our earlier conversations. But, uh, you know, in, in the kind of in the in the concept of interdependency and how it's relevant at the moment with the current situation and and also the fact that, you know, everybody's dispersed in a different place all over the world uh, with different ideas about about uh, how we approach this situation now and in the next few months, and also what people are doing, you know, are they making art, are they thinking about something else? We started this conversation series with the artist and then um, basically expanding on it with uh, talking to other people. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to what you guys are going to uh, talk about and what everybody's doing right now. Yes, thank you, Tomas. Cool. And remember, last video you get the tzatziki recipe. <laughs> I'm waiting. So. Cool. So, looking. Okay, I'm, so I'm gonna say bye to you. Yeah, and goodbye, and uh, I'll see you soon. Manage to bring in Julian. Cool. Bye. Bye. Okay, and now I should be able to call Julian to join us. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard. Apparently a monkey can do it, so I should be able to do it too. Hello, Julian! Hello. Hi. How are you? Hey. Um, so we just had Tomas who said hi. Um, so I am Irini Linardaki again. I co-curated uh, the show Interdependency Now with uh, Jenny Marquetto. And uh, the artists who participate are also Vincent Parizeau, Peter Soriano, Julian Gardier, and Tat Futan, right? I didn't forget anyone. Um, the, uh, the exhibition Interdependency Now uh, explores uh, the work of artists who work, uh, on, you know, in collaborative uh, in the collaborative theme so there are artists who have a dimension of collaboration or performance of cooperation or any form of interdependence in their work so individually um julian uh, showed surprise which is a subscription um magazine i don't know if i should say magazine you can correct me on that uh but it's a handmade book that you have under subscri subscription right and you showed all 12 of them, if I remember correctly, at Radiator Arts. And, um... <laughs> so um, I think what's interesting is that there is this form of interaction between you and your public, but we can explore it uh, a little bit more. Um, I have written some questions. Um, so I met your work, I think, in October, where you brought one for real to my birthday party, right? Of the, the surprise, that is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I also saw your work at uh, Brick, which was a decoupage, I don't know how you say, uh, last summer, mm -hmm. which I thought was amazing. So it was amazing. I saw some framed work and then I saw the big carpet. And then when I, I saw the little books, I was like, wow, you know, we have to work with this. And I'm always fascinated by the idea of uh, artists working with subscribers and um, 
I want you to tell us a little bit more about the origins of Surprise, if you want to. Yeah, and I actually I want to show things. I think that would be uh, more fun. Uh, so, yeah, so I've been, so you, you, you talked about a few uh, different cutouts things and I've been cutting since like, I don't know, since I remember, like first as a teenager making stencils for, to make t-shirts to, to, to make some, some side money <laughs> in, in uh, high school. And then, uh, then it became like really one of the, my, my favorite uh, technique or that expands in so many different ways after like for installation, paintings, um, all these books cut out or sometimes videos, like many different ways. And, uh, and so for a very long time, I've been cutting most likely like, um, magazine that would buy or find some kind of ready-made object. Um, maybe I can show one to start. And, and the, um, yeah, oops, I'm moving I'm right there. <laughs> uh, up. And yeah, so that's um, an example of, a, of an antique catalog um, from an antique dealer. Um, but each of every page is cut in a way that actually nothing is, uh, it's removed. So you can still, you see, um, go back to the original content, you see, on both sides, yeah, yeah. because like everything is there. So the, the question of the constraint actually is something that's very important in the work that comes again and again. And in the world we live in, I guess it's making it's becoming, it making more and more sense to to try to make the most of the of the least and uh, to 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 just uh, try to to avoid to make any uh, or just to be with destruction or to to not have any spares. And um, so so yeah, I've been making these from found objects for a very long time and. Um, and back in 2015, I believe, um, I had the, um, I did a show in the, in Troyes, in an art center in France, in the middle of France, because Troyes, and there, it was like a big installation in a former church, and that was spanning from, um, from sculptures made out of wood that was used, used as lecterns on which there were, I made books. <laughs> from pictures I took all around the city. And, um, and so that was the first time that I actually uh, was making my own books. I have one here mm -hmm. that I can maybe show to you. Uh, let's see, let's go back. And so they were like larger books uh, that's, that the visitors could actually um, touch and, and they can flip through. And so, and also, and that's where I actually uh, found the, 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 the power of, of working with, um, with, with these images, like with uh, images made from the site, from the context, where actually the, I, I found like the viewer's connection to the work was, uh, was different than like the, the connection they could have with a um, mm -hmm. ready made object, because all of a sudden they could um, recognize places and they could actually connect with the works on different levels, and sometimes even like like even deeper than I could myself, maybe sometimes because because they were yeah. the place they would have grew up uh, or, or, or spent the, their entire life, and then um, so when I came back after this, I really wanted to make uh, to make my own books to cut, and but I didn't really have the like the funds to 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 produce the books. Like I was like, okay, can I make one book and then. Because uh, I work in abundance, I make a lot, I mean, I produce a lot of work, so I could not really like start to, I'm not the kind of artist who just kind of work on the prototype and and try to elaborate this to to the point that's like mm -hmm. the perfect thing. It's more like kind of a flow that just like takes a lot of different shapes and different forms and, and, and evolve from one to another. So um, so I, I had to find some, some ways that I could actually make tons of work. And... Um, and so because I didn't really want to pay for the prints, uh, especially that size, uh, I start uh, painting, uh, painting on paper and, and go with work like, like this one. For like two years, I was making like them um, uh, like, like every day, like for, I have like 
maybe 200 of these pieces. So they were like wax and pigments on, 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 on paper. Oh, the light is getting okay. lower. And uh, maybe I go a bit higher, sorry. And oops, uh, and um, I lost my, I have a technical. <laughs> <laughs> Live from New York. <laughs> it's Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I take it in the wrong way. What's going on there? Okay. And so, so which also, hmm, I guess I'm 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 doing it the wrong way. That's what's going on. Whatever. So yeah. Oh, there wow. you go. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's open it to the last page too. So because it's I'm I'm struggling with it now. So yeah. So. These are like 18 by 24 uh, once open. And um, yeah, so, so I, I, I made so many of these and then, um, and then start uh, surprise. And surprise came first as uh, just like um, every year. I don't know if you do this, but uh, every year I do a little Christmas card or New Year's card that I send to friends, collectors, and like all the people that support the work or, and, and so we're just like, I don't know, to give some news and to give, to make a little gift of sorts. And so, <laughs> and, and that was uh, the year where financially it was getting a little better because I, I was, I just got this commission from the MTA. So I was like breathing a little bit. So I thought, oh, maybe I can actually invest this money. And, and, and so for once, usually it's very DIY, this card. And for once I, for the first time, I, I actually print something with a printer and yeah. <laughs> and so I made this little booklet, which was like a review of the year. So you see, that's another of these painting cutouts we just saw. Like this one on the, on the, on the cover is actually one that's like not painted, just like white. And, and then inside, that was like the first prototype of the, the MTA project we're working on. And, and then that year also, the, the carpet I made for the Mobile National was like... Um, at the Elysee, so that was also the, the thing. And and so that's actually, that defined like the size of, of Surprise. Because after this, when, when I was making them, I made about like maybe 200 of them that I sent away. Mm -hmm. And they all cut by hand, one after the other, and they were all different. And so right. after, after doing this, I thought like, while I was making them, I was like, ah, I kind of like this. Maybe that's, a, I have a system here. Maybe I could actually make 200 every month. It would take me like a, a week, let's say, but I have three more weeks to work. <laughs> uh, and so I started thinking, so I just insert in each of these cards a little paper saying like, you want to, do you want to receive more surprise? Just like <laughs> with a, a link to my website with like a, you know, like a, a subscription button. And that's where it started. And so I started to have a few, uh, uh, a few subscribers, and and that was the beginning of it. So now we, I think, we're num I'm waiting for the number twenty six, coming okay. tomorrow from the printer that I need to cut and 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 ship away. And um, yeah, so maybe maybe I can show a few. Um, Julian Blanca yes. just joined, and she said that she has received one of those. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's available by subscription, and it was it's rather cheap. I mean, it's like the way to make also like uh, something that's very affordable, like for uh, to anybody. And because uh, in this my work, there's often this thing that kind of like uh, the the border between uh, something that would be an edition or something that would be a unique piece. And that's actually what it is. This piece, I was like, they're printed, so the old prints are the same, but then they cut by hand and Usually I try to keep like a composition that like I look for a composition for like a, a few ones and then I, I, I try to stick to, to one for the surprise to make them let, more of an addition. But I mean, they're mm -hmm. always different, I'd like to say. And then, um, yeah, so let's, let's see one, uh, number 24, for example. I mean, I took one just by chance. Uh, this one was just like uh, a ferry ride to, to Staten Island on a beautiful... Uh, winter day so we can even see the statue of liberty over there and everybody is just like looking for the cell phone obviously uh, and so as we turn the pages the content mix up and it's become this kind of like uh, complex layered collage but uh, as i said like anytime we can still 
go back to the original content and see the the, the photograph themselves. Yeah. So, and and um, and yeah, and I mean it's been like an amazing uh, experience. Uh, this uh, almost like two years and a half now of um, yeah. a deep relationship with the subscribers. Uh, I often receive like like emails or notes from. Uh, from them saying, telling me like, um, sharing with me like how much they they liked it and uh, they're waiting for the next one. Like, uh, so I, I mean, it's been really interesting um, on many different levels. Uh, and I mean, some month I'm like, and also it's kind of a discipline, like you know, to every month thing like, oh, what are you gonna do next? And what is gonna? And sometimes it's plan ahead. Sometimes it's just like last minute um, event that happens or. Uh, I mean, often with me, planned things don't really work out. So I plan something, I try it out, and I hate it, and I change for a last minute thing that that would feel more natural. Um, so yeah. uh, Tomas had a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, uh, one uh, he asked is this book art. Uh, yeah, I believe I, it could be in that. Uh, I mean. Uh, I accept any label, but I don't really, I mean, I don't really care about them really. Cause I, I think that a lot of my work is like in between. So in between so many different things and, and labels is one of them. So, uh, yes, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it's part of, uh, it's some kind of artist book in some ways. Yeah. Uh, so yes. But, and, um, sorry. Cool. I mean, what I like about, I, I think that there is, I don't, I don't want to use the word old fashioned, but there's something, I mean, anything that has to do with the post, the idea of the post office or being related to the people who receive something that they can afford this, let's say dimension, you know, I'm very fond of the idea that you can send something through the actual post office, put it in an envelope, put a stamp and, um, I think that that dimension is really uh, interesting. Uh, it has a long history of artists who used correspondence as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was an exhibition at uh, Beaubourg, I remember, that had all letters of artists that they were sending and all sorts of stuff, you know, in envelopes mm -hmm. that I thought was amazing. Um, so it's also, also mail art, I guess. Book art and mail art. I guess. Yes, yes, I guess we can put two labels and, you know, there's this whole attachment um, to the post office that I find very sweet. Um, also, Tomas is asking um, if you can talk us a little bit about what you're doing now and is it related to this work or are you uh, moving towards uh, like your public art project? I find that they're related in a way. I mean, at least yeah, everything before. relates. Like, where the like where the, the 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 MTA project and this relate is like in the the system of like not having any waste and like and, and keeping every part. So because the um, the MTA project is, is it's a series of benches and and windscreens uh, that are made out of metal and the benches are made from like one single sheet of metal that's cut through a single continuous line and and folded in order to make like two figurative sculptures and a bunch. Uh, a sitting for for two and a platform to sit like a bit higher and everything made of like this one continuous shape with no leftovers so in that regard it's exactly the same system and and then i mean then it's different because uh but there's also a contextual aspect of it because every figures is like um yeah, sure. based on, on on the stations themselves and the history of the stations um and, yeah. and then evolve also someone like these evol uh, involved um, a printer and uh, this relationship with the printer where these the 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 pieces for the mta involve also such a relationship because i these are not something i could have made myself so i work closely with um, um a master craftsman and uh, i mean a fabricator um in um, yeah. upstate new york casey fabrication and and yeah, and that was like very interesting. I mean, I'm always interested in, in process and in technique in general. And sometimes I, I try to explore this and I invent my own or or just like 
to 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 match like to try to understand another one you know like to understand the, the tool they use the technique the process and to start to try to think through this and uh and being very close relationship with the the fabricator so we can talk and and if we can send feedback saying like oh this is just like uh like to to find the right challenges you know for the fabricator not yeah. like something that's just yeah. stupid that uh to make but something that makes sense for them to make and that challenge them in a way that they're excited about and and yeah. with casey that was amazing because uh, yeah he was like he was just very interested by the by the project itself. it was like i hope it's gonna work i don't know we, we, we're gonna find out with this like this thing where we we work like to, you know we're like in this adventure together and it's like uh and that was exciting the same with when i did the carpet uh yeah all these relationships are very interesting to me and uh but only if you you, you you collaborate and you really respect, you know, the the other's person yeah. like skills and 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 you go really like you don't come with a project that's ready to 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 be made, you know, and when uh, you're very strict on everything, you it's more like you come with a, some kind of a of a, um, a grid to play with, and so so we can just like uh, yeah. elaborate together the best way to to and the most and interesting way for everybody to be made. I mean, even your work, because I've seen a lot of work in the MTA arts, I mean, your work is benches. So in a way, it, it's, uh, it adds to the experience of waiting on uh, the platform, right? It's not just the work that's standing there. It's not decoration. And I guess it's, yeah. Yeah. And it's between again, I guess it's design also, I guess. So, I mean, it's like, yeah. like once again, it's like we're blurring the things, like being in between. Which is very annoying for some, but uh, that's I think where I am, and like and always been, and and I have to embrace that, I guess. <laughs> um, no, that's cool. And um, we did two things. Uh, what you uh, did, unfortunately, for those who joined us, uh, the shot radiator art is closed right now, but hopefully it will continue at some point. Uh, we can find how many of your uh, surprises in the show. I think back then that was a. Uh... Uh, I think the last one was this one. 20, so there was 25 of them. And uh, and I I built a shelf, a custom shelf for this. So there was like, I built little stands and, 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 and a shelf. So, and that was actually the first time I was really looking at them like as like a collection, like all together. So that was kind of like fascinating mm -hmm. to me to see that. Uh, and I was like, oh shit. Like to see like, you know, the time passing and the, the numbers, yeah. uh, like all these things. I was like, that was a uh, kind of impressive to to me just like to witness this and uh, yeah so I built this uh this yeah this shelf just for it with, with little uh, partition for each uh, each each issue and and since uh, the they opened I already have like two or three I think that and so it's been all this mess has been around for some time now I've been locked in and stuff but uh, <laughs> but uh, and it's funny because um, like the subscribers were like ah. Oh, you 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 found out you, you you find ways to make it even during the corona amazing so it was like so they were like very <laughs> happy about this so. yeah. um i have one or two more questions um i mean there's a lot to say about your energy but i'm gonna come there <laughs> later um uh tomas is asking are you able to work right now or are there other things in your mind that you kind of just answered uh, the Corona question. Well, uh, I mean, it's funny. I, I mean, I've been in transition for a while. So like, I don't know, I think I've been quite depressed, like um, in the, but that was before Corona. I got many different <laughs> things. I was, so I was like, I was not in the most productive, uh, my most productive self, which is really unlike me. And so I think I went through, Hard time. So, but before that, I was painting a lot, like large paintings in the studio I share uh, with uh, uh, um, Alejandra Siber, which is a painter from Argentina, but who's based in New York since like for, she's been here for 20 years or something. But uh, she's having some uh, big project in, in in Buenos Aires. But um, and so there, I, yeah, I've been painting quite a bit for the in the past two years and. No, so when the this all like, Corona thing started, um, my wife is an artist as well. She's a painter and and she's also a art teacher. And she had to, uh, so we had to share this the apartment uh, like twenty four seven, which we rarely do because usually she's 
at in the studio all day or uh, in the various schools she teaches at. And um, she leaves early in the morning. She comes back uh, as late as she can. And um, and she's just work, work, work. Uh, but like in the most pleasant way, like it's you know, painting in the studio or, or teaching. And um, and so I first had to make some home improvements. So to to build some shelves, not just for the surprise and the shows, but uh, or the frame for the the pieces, but uh, to make some uh, some to organize a little bit this the space that so we can share it like uh, in a better ways. And then I start. Uh, I don't know. I was like in a really a lot of cooking. So I was more living artfully than making art. And and all this led now to like I'm working now on the project of like I'm remaking my website as I do every every so often, every too often. And and then like digging the the in the rabbit hole of the website because I, I've been making I, I used to to make website for a living. So and uh since I moved to New York I that stopped but like now I might go back to this, and um, and and as I was making it, and uh, I was and and seeing all the things I receive from galleries every day, like uh, oh, this amazing online viewing, right? Which is like they all look the same, and I was like, it's actually not difficult to make, and I felt like so I'm making this this tool for myself to manage my collection and, and my website at the same time, and and uh, events and all these things and, and start to think about why not making it available for other artists and try to think about like how we can collaborate or we can like maybe even like, because uh, there's so many other tools, you know, we use like to, for newsletters, for all like all this, this third party website we use. And most of them, like, I mean, they're not very expensive to use. It's like, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, but they add up. And, and and you just add like, but for 50 bucks a month, you get like the full version where you can have like unlimited uh, uh, people working with it that they use for the businesses. And I'm like, why don't we just work all together and just apply for one and use it all and just like, and, and you know, cutting the cost and like, and, and having like a tool that's like our website and allows us to, to do like social media things and, and, and to sell work and all these things. So, Right now, it's really at the beginning. I'm just scratching my head, like going back to PHP and all this thing, and like so more like relearning everything. Um, but I start to have some little uh, successes, and I hope I get to the point that I can find something that's really uh, helpful as first for myself, and then and I can, and that could be uh, helpful enough that I can be shared and I can technically make it that's easy to share. And that could be like used for whoever wants to be part of it as like eventually even the place to make the website. And so, yeah, this is, I think this is going to be a good tool. Um, it's a good project. And it's yeah, it keeps me at night. I mean, like I work about two, like obsessed by code, like, you know, and I didn't go back to sleep. So, so. yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, one thing that, I mean, we can go back to that after. Uh, one thing that surprised me uh, positively, so please, uh, was that you have a lot of energy. Uh, we did collaborate also with Tamas and Daniela and Melanie to the show Occupy also in February. And you had prepared something with Surprise, right? Where you used them in a different way. Yeah, so for the, that was just for the first time, basically, I use surprise. So surprise has been this 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 platform for me, just like to be able to to print photographs, you know, and to have like this like to 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 produce these books every month. So it's paid for by the subscribers, and I get a little bit. I mean, I don't have enough subscribers, so I can make like a really like a, a enough of a profit right now, but. That could be that would be that would be great, but at least it pays for itself and 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 all these things that i i couldn't i would not afford any i mean if i didn't have this this system and for the show we did that uh occupy so that was at the the consulate uh the, the greek, greek consulate. consulate what's that the greek consulate the greek consulate yes. in new york um yes. so basically i use surprise. Um, I made a, a special surprise for the piece I was making uh, for, so for for the thing. So like, like again, in between, blah, blah. It's like, so basically the surprise became like a, um, 
part of a two-sided pieces that was like basically a piece you put on the table that's like a standing frame. And, and one side you have a open up surprise made out of, um, of, um, of fragment of pieces from the collection of the Met, which is just by, just by, the, um, by the consulate. And uh, that, that like, um, you know, there's a stock of images that are actually open source that you can, like, the open library, like, like open access. So anybody uh, can actually print them, sell them, do whatever they want with yeah. this photograph. And so that's one thing I, I was using. And on the other side, there was um, a drawing. I mean, I can, I can go back to show. Oh, I'm losing you. I think you're getting bored. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's my listening face. <laughs> uh, and so that was a surprise, number 23. And so, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the other side, these are actually um, real forms from the the American immigration of Greek immigrant in the in the thirties. Yeah. That I also found like online. Um, and so that's the one I it, have in my that's the one I have in my house. Okay. But you have two, I think. I think you have the one from Istanbul yeah. too. And 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 so as we turn the page, the forms get mixed up and, and the sculptures from the Met get mixed up. And and they were all cut differently, like they they're all like unique pieces. Um, and on the other side, I made this. Um, so that's another series. I have many series of work. I mean, like I, I often, yeah, often there's so a process that generates. And so, and these were like drawings. So basically um, they are inlays. So it's a photograph that's cut out from in the paper and, 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 and taped. And then it's extended just with a uh, pen and ink. And, um, mm -hmm. and so that was what the other side. And uh, I don't know if I have, um, I can show pictures, but that, so, and the, the frame, so I made the frame and one side was um, kind of um, neo, neoclassical, you know, with like yeah. a decor, like a colognes and stuff. And, uh, and the other side was kind of more like a, the standard modernist frame as uh, the one we use in our, the convention we use in our, in the, in our contemporary art world. And so, and the, so from a distance, I mean, they're placed on this uh, wooden uh, room, this is the witching room of the, this uh, yeah. Upper East Side mansion. And so they're placed on this wooden table uh, on little mats that are made from the leftovers of all this cut out. Um, uh, so leftovers, not the surprise, because surprise have no leftovers, but from the, the inlay. <laughs> and, um, and so they are placed underneath and they play almost like a little architecture. They look like, from a distance, they look like little models. And actually people were getting very close to them and they placed on the table as like, when you basically go like, like to the, just to the height of them, you become like part of it and you become like almost like in an installation, like a little model, like little city or something. And, and, and so, and you go around and they're like little sculptures, so like little tables. Sculptures. Well, yeah, what's funny is we started those two installations just before the quarantine, right? Yeah. And um, I've been following, uh, because during the confinement they posted, you know, as they started to adapt the consulate to the new, you know, ways to um, allow people in. I've, I've been seeing everybody's work here. I saw Tomas. Tomas's work is next to the Greek flag and the president of Greece as you enter. It's very interesting. And um, I remember, I mean, there's something to say about your energy of production because I remember you were producing those and it was a lot of work. And, um, and then as we were, because, um, you know, it had this organic, the whole group had this organic way to exist with the people of the consulate, the employees, and to develop our work within as well a little bit and to adapt to the space. And as we were there, I remember during like the day before the opening or something, and we're saying, oh my God, a cut out carpet would be great here. <laughs> and I remember you, and I remember all the things like, no, we can't, we can't, it's, it's too last minute it's really the you know we open tomorrow and then you rolled the carpet went about the carpet brought on your bicycle 
and then you started yeah. cutting out nonstop in the consulate and people were sending me pictures of you like cutting and cutting and cutting and it's still there for now we have to <laughs> remove them and then one week later we were opening at radiator arts right um you made the shells we put them in and now it's closed so i find it interesting that there is this energy to react um to uh you know to adapt to these uh, shows to these spaces even like if you say okay we have this little corner in the show can you put them there yes i'll make a shelf that be exactly the right size and the same energies that you put in your production it's interesting to see that the continuity hasn't stopped, that this continuity of production is during this confinement, even, you know, in difficult times, you continue to produce your uh, surprise. And um, do you find that, I mean, I can imagine this going two ways, maybe there are five other ways to go, but is it because you have uh, a commitment to your subscri subscribers? Or is it because you need to also continue to work? Or is it something else? But for the surprise, it's certainly the, the commitment to the subscribers. I mean, and so, because that's something I never put aside, you know, that's something I, I mean, I provide like every month a new, a new issue since the, since the first one, since the number zero. And I guess the, the first was a zero and I guess the, the, the the card was number uh, beta or pre zero or something. But, um, but, and about the necessity to do, to make things, I mean, yes, but it can take many shapes and form. It could, it could be art, but sometimes, like the way I cook is the same way I make art. I mean, I, I, I improvise, I experiment, I, 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 I try again and again, you know, and, and, Anything I make, I mean, I, I, it's so to me, it's like, I don't know, it's a, it's a, because right now I cannot really say that I'm, I'm making much art per se. Mm -hmm. And I should, because I mean, I mean, I draw, I do, I mean, I guess when, even when I say I don't do, I, I, I always make stuff, but, um, but like, but creativity for me is like something that's just a, so just like the, the idea of, of invention and, and let you, and let you just be able to, 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 to allow not knowing and, you know, and embracing the fact to not know and, and enjoying the process of not knowing and learning through the making. It's something that I apply in my, like in every, in every ways, you know, and. And yeah, sorry. No, yeah. Uh, I'm interested to um, know what are these uh, challenges and what are the challenges, what are the benefits of working in this interdependent uh, manner with your subscribers? I mean, or to be connected to them in a way. I don't know. Um... Tamas says... Yeah, Tamas says, how does this relate to interdependency, the ongoing effort to send them out? Yeah, the continuity of this process. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's interdependent because they would not exist without them and, and you know, and they're waiting for it. I mean, it's like this, like, it's, 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 a, it's, it's the one project that's public every, like, every month, you know? Like, even if I don't have any... If any show for some time, for example, that would be the one thing that would have to go out and even the audience is, is limited. I mean, sometimes you make sure and the audience is limited anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I guess today, today we have all the social media and stuff. So it feels different today, I guess, uh, because if you want, you can be like, like presenting yourself and your work like on a daily basis uh, through mm -hmm. social media. Uh, but that was not a possibility, like not so long ago. Like you know, that didn't really exist. Uh, and so, so I guess like the main art was a way to do this. I mean, like, yeah. and some. I mean, for example, like I don't know, like, um, uh, Burtonski. Do you know this? Uh, I mean, you know because you've been in France for a long time. But uh, and 
And, but Boltonski, for example, is, so he's a, a, a famous French artist. And I mean, we, we've seen his show in New York. I mean, here and there, he had a, not so long ago, he, had, he made a big installation at the, um, at the, at the Armory. Armory. Yeah. And, uh, but one of his first work when he was just out, out of, of school was he made like this postcard, basically, or little letters that he sent to people in the art world that were actually announcing his death. He was like dead under, uh, in a car accident. He was like, he's been just like run away by a car. And he was sending this like little fictionist collage pieces. And, and, um, and that was a way to reach out and to, you know, to get the word out. And, and that's, uh, that's really how we started. And from there, a lot of things happened. And yeah. so, and I mean, and here in New York, we, I mean, of course, there's like many, many, uh, there's like a long history of this in, uh, in the 70s, 80s, 60s. And, uh, well, he's, Boltonski is still into collections. He may not be sending yeah. postcards. I mean, he's still obsessed about death as well. But um, I was, he was my neighbor in France, actually, even. Oh, you were in, in South? He used to have, his studio used to be in Malakoff. Yeah, yeah. So you went to South of Paris? Yeah, yeah. And he used to do programming in my local cinema. And you could just go and he would announce the program. And he always talked about death. And, but he does this thing about collecting too. He talks a lot about this, you know. Um, he has this um, obsession. I don't know how big his studio is because <laughs> he has a lot of them. Uh, but there is, there is, um, you know, if there is you sending them out and there's people collecting them, right? On the other sure. on the other end. So people are, can build their own collection by doing, I think you have two forms of subscription and uh, we can throw that in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just f to help with the production. Actually, I see one of the, of my, my, of my dear subscriber, Robert Christie, <laughs> that's you doing. Hi, hi, Bob. And um, yeah, it's just like, there's just like one that's unlimited and one that's limited to 100 copies uh, signed uh, just to have two levels of subscription. Uh, mm -hmm. So for th those who, who can afford it and, and want to be more involved and help the, the, to support the project deeper, they can, they can have like this uh, uh, premium um, and which I don't think the project would exist without them because that's, it's pretty, I mean, I, also I never made really a lot of communication about it. So which is that something I should start. And actually I got to make it uh, better on my website too, because right now when I see now how it is on the website, it never changed since day one. And if you don't know the work and you don't know me, you can't even see the work on the website. It's just like, it was yeah, two graphics and you're like, tried. And I'm like, what is this? Who's gonna, who's gonna just, I mean, a, a few people subscribe that I didn't know before that I met through this, but most of them are people that I, that, that I know. And then, um, that, well, that, yeah. The idea, you know, because now we understand completely the idea of crowdfunding, but um, I know an artist, Alexander, uh, who would actually fund his projects. He, he did these projects in India so he would ask for funds from collectors before he left and then they would get postcards in exchange from all the places where he went and then you can sort of trace a map uh, and then he would make on his, way, on his way back he would collect all the postcards and make a little catalog um, he also made these uh, drawings with photocopiers just about anywhere in um, in India and then he would just color them with markers and send them back to people the, so the idea that a there's this distance between you and you know your um, collectors, let's say this idea. But I also really love the idea that you say if there's a month where you don't have a show or you don't have you know uh, a public to interact with, you can still say, well, I have my surprise to make. You know, I really like this uh, dimension. And um, do you find that? Um, I mean, I don't know. Is this a project that for now you see it continuing? Uh, do you think that you're going to stop at some time? That's what Robert, like Bob, asked often. He was like, how long do you think it's going to continue? But then he said that one one month and the next month we say like, I think this project is very good for you. Uh, I think it brings you a lot <laughs> of uh, interesting things. But it's like, so different each time. And I think you, you get really getting something out of this. 
and is is one of the the subscribers that that reach out often when you receive so you them. Have, and, uh, so you have feedback from your subscribers. Yeah, often uh, for for from a lot of them, and, and it's funny because some uh, like there's one of my subscribers who is an uh, an engineer and not exactly in the art world, but like and and that I met actually randomly at, at a. And, um, I went to 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 see a talk of um, what's his name, I'm, I'm missing, uh, Kentridge, uh, and we met in the in the line, you know, and uh, <laughs> and wow. and, uh, and he, once I remember he invited me for dinner, and he came with the last three issues, asking me a lot of questions. I was like, so what is this? I don't this one I understand, but this one, like, what is this about? And this and this, and then I, and that was like kind of like nicely challenging and opening to discussion that was like kind of like fruitful you know? so that was interesting and and often i mean like yeah some like, like each month they write a little something saying like oh okay but what is this thing and this thing so you open discussions like they're asking for like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know each time because each wow. time is a little moment often you know i mean they're all different but like the some about just like yeah some are about like a, a moment in time and and okay, I understand you have the time to make them. We said you have the, all this energy that goes into your production, but what about a month where you have I don't know how many projects happening? Mm -hmm. Do you still manage to find the time to cut yeah. out? Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't have any, and I don't even. And the funny thing is, that each time I, I think like, oh, I should make like free in advance, and and uh, and I, actually that would be cheaper to 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 print them that way, and like to, and but I think. Twice I did, like I, I print two at the time, never more than two. And that was because I knew I was going for residency for like more than a month. So I had to get to, to go with them or I, I need to find a way like we could be ready on time. So, but beside that, often it's, it's really something like a diary, like something that comes from like really uh, something of the moment, you know? And um, so, and I mean, you can always find some. I mean, come on, it's, time is the only thing we have. Right? I mean, and, uh, <laughs> don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, there's all this mythology about time. Like, time is money. Like, uh, I don't have the time. Blah blah blah. But uh, I don't know. I feel like time. The experience of time is still different from one moment to another. Like, like right now with this uh, confinement. Like, it's like both long and so short. Like when you. Yeah. You'll see, oh, what? I've been in for like how many weeks, a month? And uh, by the same time, the day seems like to never end. I mean, it's like, yeah. so, yeah. And I, so you, I think you can always find time. I mean, I always, I do, actually, at least. Well, there is, um, there is, well, I had this discussion today with a friend who um, believes that time passes really quickly and uh, as she grows older and we had this discussion because i read this amazing i was curating a show in 2010 and i was trying to find the idea of an endless summer you know when you're a child and you have this impression that a summer lasts forever you know you like you like remember the day you drop your bag coming from the last day at school you dropped in your room and then summer this endless huge thing opens up and it it seems like it lasts a lifetime now that you're an adult it's like two months and it's gone like this and um this philosopher was explaining his point of view at least that it's because of how many things you do when you're a kid during the summer you don't stop doing things all the time and all these are you know free activities things that you direct that you're deciding what to do you know you go out with your friends and you play for the entire day and the idea of playing for an entire day makes a day seem endless in a way you know or like uh you know and as you're growing adult you have all these routines and all these tasks and all these things that have to be done and this doesn't have the idea of playing and um you know and you we can see your walls behind when we're talking about collections yeah i mean <laughs> yeah. collection is part of my life too and like in in any things like uh, maybe hoarding, my wife would say sometimes, maybe, because like, <laughs> like anything uh, and everything. Uh, 
and I've been doing this since like like forever. And that's why I was we so have, uh, friendly we works have... are in series, I guess. But what do you say? We have two more questions. Um, Luke I see Luke, is... Luke Landrick, he said, because I, I, I worked, I did that. We worked together uh, on one of his projects as a director for theater and uh, musicals, uh, all kind of like crazy project. Even paints now, he paints with the lasso. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and so we, we, we met at a, at a workshop and then we, we, we wanted to, to collaborate. And so we, but we, we did it, we did like a, a kind of DIY project back then on a, in, but in a big theater midtown. Uh, where I did like a cutout for one of his uh, uh, of his um, musicals, and and uh, I did a few projects like this. And I see Maria who asked for the inspiration for the for the for the surprise. And I mean, as I said, it's really something of the moment. So they change from one to another. I mean, for those who are subscribers and they, they, oh, those who had the chance to see the show when it was uh, open, uh, they could see like. Um, uh, there's a very uh, big variety of them. Actually, I showed two that were uh, made of a uh, photograph. Maybe I can find, uh, I don't know if I have one made of drawing, but it, yeah. But um, yeah, maybe you can go back to one because I see that maybe some people just got here. Yeah. So let's see another one. The number is zero. The number is zero. And so which one, this one actually was made from um, uh, a lot from, from works, from uh, uh, open access works, you know, from collection of museums. And so this one actually had like a specific um, inspiration because there was for February, so there was a Valentine. So there was all about uh, the scent Valentine. Um, so both like, I mean, what we, we celebrate today to the real life of Valentine. So, uh, to, so yeah, so that was like a, a play with all these different levels. And that's actually his skull. So, so we got fun. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so the inspiration. Okay. Oh, this is great. And Luke is saying that he still has your set design. Oh. <laughs> so, he has you in his collection. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it was made because, as I said, it was pretty DIY. So we made the best of what we had. And we found this, uh, we, you know, Matter for the Arts. I know it's a great institution in, in Queens where actually a lot of uh, businesses donate work, um, materials that artists can just uh, use for free. And uh, so uh, we went there and we found like, the one role of matter that could actually work, but it worked so so. I mean, that was not the 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 my favorite matters I worked with ever. But um, but I yeah. think once in space in the theater. I mean, theater is great because you play with light, you play with all these things, so you can you can always kind of cheat a bit. So and uh, and the funny thing is, like his play was about uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean, um, because actually, I think his parents. Am I, am I, am I right? Look, if you're still here. Um, or relatives, I mean, whatever. But it described the the the, the life of uh, American expat in Saudi in the seventies, and uh, and funny enough, I got to to spend a month in Saudi about like uh, just I guess a year ago, in residency, and uh, so I had to think about that quite a bit. <laughs> what you experience it? <laughs> okay. Well. Um... I think we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, it's so. been an hour. So if you have questions it's now, are we leaving? <laughs> oh, somebody just joined. Oh. Um, I mean, I find the continuity in the work uh, fascinating. I'm very happy we were able to um, share work all together. Um, uh, I want to thank Tamas and Daniela who gave us this chance. And yeah, thank um, you. <laughs> and uh, they were always positive about uh, doing this. We have talked about it for so long, and it was always very easygoing. So I have met many um, galleries who have such an easygoing attitude. Um, Thank you, Jody. 
And uh, thank you for uh, being with us, everyone. <laughs> and, I'm glad uh, to have you on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's amazing. I have to say now, at the end of the talk, that Julian is an amazing cook. So now everybody's like, oh! <gasps> Tzatziki. <laughs> tzatziki. It's time for tzatziki recipe. Oh, I remember the food wait just before I left New York with Leila and you guys. Oh, my God. It was so good. So this is the amazing wall that goes, all the drawings and everything so it goes all the way up. Next week, and... we're not open, Tamas, are we? Oh, no, the tzatziki, <laughs> I guess, next week, he says. Yes. So um, next week we're going to do this with Ted Futan who's um, the last artist I think um, who hasn't done one I'm not sure and I don't know how we'll continue but we will continue somehow um, to be with you guys until Radiator opens again so thank you for being with us Mwah. bye and thank you for inviting me and uh, for doing this and, and, and to all of us it's really easy to do we should do this like anytime it's the power is ours <laughs> <laughs> bye thank you Bob love you <laughs> thanks Luke thanks Maria thank everybody who joined and... oh Jason now Jason we're leaving thanks for coming but, uh, <laughs> I awesome. think we recorded so if you if yes, you, you can if you find will. it in the story of Radiator Arts I think, right. right after bye